Today is what is known in the Christian calendar as Maundy Thursday. It's the night that Jesus was arrested, the night before he was crucified on Friday. Um, and the word man, Maundy comes from the Latin mandatum, which comes from John 13. And I wanted to read this. this is one of most, the most beautiful passages in all of Scripture. Is when Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And I want us to think about this for a little bit. John 13, verses 1 to 5. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. There's so much that I could say about this passage. One of the things um, that is the foundation for it is, is what Jesus knew. Jesus knew that his death was coming, and that he was going to be, be betrayed. He knew two negative, hard things that he was facing. But underneath those hard things, he knew two other things that were even more true, that were even more reliable, that he, he could take even more deeply into his heart. It says that he knew that the Father had given all things into his hand. Jesus had all of the power in the world. And that he had come from God that his origin was from God, and that he was going back to God. So that his betrayal and his death was just bringing him back to his heavenly Father, who loved him and gave him everything to have control over. These are the things that are going on in Jesus' head. The negative things of his death and of the, the betrayal of one of his disciples, but the positive things of knowing where he had come from, where he was going, and the authority that he had. So what does Jesus do as a result of knowing these things, this hard thing he's about to encounter, but this hope that he has that he's going to be reunited with his Father? And what are the, the, the knowing that he has control over everything in the entire universe, that God had given all things into his hands, what does he do? In slow motion... The Bible's pretty brief in its description of a lot of things. John slows down and maps out step by step what, God, what Jesus is doing in the, this passage. He rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments. He takes a towel, ties it around his waist, pours water into a basin, and began to wash one by one, the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Jesus, knowing the great blessings that he has from God, uses that as an opportunity to slow down and to serve. Do we, first of all, do we know the blessings that we have from God? If we are believers, do we understand the depth of the riches of spiritual blessings that we have from Him? Maybe this is why we're entering into this negative time, this time of like Jesus was entering into a negative time, of being put to death, of being betrayed. We're entering into this negative time of global pandemic. Maybe it's to slow us down and to contemplate the great spiritual blessings we have. And rather than use that as an opportunity to boast and to brag and to think that we're better than other people who don't have that benefit, it slows us down and causes us to serve. 
you know, in this, in this time where we don't have as much to do, what if you, instead of binging Netflix, instead of listening to podcast after podcast, instead of jumping around from activity to activity, scrolling through Instagram, whatever it is that you're doing to keep yourself busy, what if in the comfort and security of knowing you belong to God and that one day you would return to Him, if you slowed down and tenderly, carefully, meticulously serve those that are placed in your path, in whatever way it is, whether it's sewing masks for people who are working on the front lines in hospitals, whether it's caring for your family, for those who are in your house, maybe elderly people, what if you did what Jesus did and slowed down and served him? Jesus actually commands us, the, the thing that I do to you, I want you to do to one another. Let us rest in the security of who we are because of Jesus and use that knowledge to slow down the fast-paced lives that we live in, which are already, we're forced to slow down right now. But if we positively use that, not to serve ourselves, but to serve others like Jesus does with us.